Welcome to the Personal Finance Channel. I'm your host, Al. And on this channel, we learn how to build and maintain wealth. Folks, before we get started with today's presentation, I wanted to remind you all to please subscribe to the channel and also hit that notification bell. That way you'll be notified when I create future videos. Hi folks, welcome to the channel. So today we're gonna talk about Honeywell International Inc. Now according to Bloomberg, Honeywell International Inc. is a worldwide technology and manufacturing company. The company provides aerospace products and services, control, sensing, and security technologies for commercial buildings, safety and productivity solutions, specialty chemicals, advanced materials, process technology for refining and petrochemicals, and energy efficient products and solutions. Now Honeywell is a very diverse company. It makes so many products for various industries. So let's take a look at some of the products that the company manufactures. Now the company manufactures aerospace related products. Uh, it also makes uh, products for buildings and cities. The company also makes chemicals and materials. The company also makes industrial and manufacturing equipment. The company also makes various retail uh, related products. The company makes uh, various safety equipment. It also manufactures sporting goods. And it also makes uh, supply chain related products as well. Now folks, we're gonna look at the company's uh, financials utilizing the balance sheet, income statement, and cash flow statement. We're first gonna take a look at the balance sheet. Now when I'm looking at a balance sheet, folks, I focus on two areas primarily. I like to look at the total assets and the total liabilities, and here's why. See, total assets is anything that a company owns that it has the capability to sell to generate cash. Total liabilities, in contrast, is the debt that the company holds. So let's compare and contrast the total assets and the total liabilities. Now, in 2016, the company's total assets was a little over $54 billion. Its total liabilities in 2016 was a little over $34 billion. In 2017, the company's total assets was a little over $59 billion. And its total liabilities for 2017 was a little over $42 billion. And in 2018, the company's total assets was a little over $57 billion. And its total liabilities for 2018 was a little over $39 billion. And finally, in 2019, the company's total assets was a little over $58 billion. And its total liabilities for 2019 was a little over $39 billion. So you see the trend, folks, every year, uh, it's at least within the last four years, its assets have been larger than its liabilities. Um, and, and, that's what, and that's what you wanna be mindful of as an investor. Um, see, when we're looking at a balance sheet, we always wanna be mindful of a company's debt. And we always wanna be mindful of the fact that we want to look to make sure that a company has more assets than it has debt. See, if it's the other way around, if a company has more debt 
than it has assets, that's risky, folks. And I and and me personally, I would not invest in a company that has more debt than it has assets. See, as in, as investors, we always want to minimize our risk. And we can do that by investing in companies that are financially sound. So let's take a look at the company's income statement. Now, when I'm looking at an income statement, folks, I like to focus on two areas primarily, the total revenues and the net income. And here's why. See, the total revenues is the total amount of income that a company generated in a given year before it paid any of its expenses out. Net income, in contrast, is the amount of income left over after the company paid all its expenses. So we're going to compare and contrast the total revenues and the net income. In 2016, the company's total revenues was a little over $39 billion. Its net income for 2016 was a little over $4 billion. And in 2017, the company's total revenues was a little over $40 billion. And its net income was a little over one billion dollars and in 2018 the company's total revenues was a little over 41 billion dollars and its net income for 2018 was a little over six billion dollars and finally in 2019 the company's total revenues was a little over 36 billion dollars and its net income for 2019 was a little over six billion dollars so the total revenues um, look pretty decent um, I, I, I like the total revenues um, and the net income for the most part is pretty is pretty decent um, there was a slight decreasement in 2017 um, if we look prior in 2016, its net income was a little over $4 billion, but then in 2017, um, it decreased and its net income was a little over $1 billion. So there was a, a, a significant uh, decreasement in its net income. Uh, however, in 2018, the company bounced back and its net income um, was a little over six billion dollars and it was um, the same in 2019 so um, I like the income statement I think it's I think the, the income statement is pretty clean um, I, I, I think the income statement looks um, looks pretty impressive so I like that so let's take a look at the cash flow statement now, when I'm looking at the cash flow statement, um, I focus on the cash from operations. See, the cash from operations is the income that the company generated from its, from, from its goods and services that it provides. Now, in 2016, the company's cash from operations was a little over $5 billion. In 2017, the company's uh, cash from operations, um, again, was a little over $5 billion. Um, in 2018, the company's cash from operations was a little over $6 billion. And finally, in 2019, the company's cash from operations was a little over $6 billion. So, I mean, it's been pretty pretty steady um, it's been it's been it's cash from operations has been averaging between five and six billion dollars um, at least within the last four years so I, I, I like that I, I, I think overall the company is a financially sound business um, we've looked at the balance sheet we've, we've 
we've looked at the income statement and we've looked we've looked at the cash flow statement so um, in my perspective the company um, is pretty financially sound and and again that's what we that's what we want to invest in we want to invest in companies that are financially sound Now, folks, I wanted to show you folks the stock performance of Honeywell, at least within the last 10 years. It's been pretty much on a roller coaster ride. The stock price has appreciated significantly if we look at it from a 10 year time horizon. So, very impressive. I like that. Um, a lot of people believe that you can't get capital appreciation when you invest in industrial related stocks and that's not necessarily true uh, Honeywell is a perfect example of a company that's in the industrial sector that will give you capital appreciation exposure so I just wanted to share this information with you folks now we're gonna take a look at the company's uh, dividend information. Now at the time of this recording, the stock is trading at $147.22. It has a dividend yield of 2.45%. Very healthy dividend yield, nothing extreme, but very solid dividend yield, I like that. It pays an annualized dividend payment per share of $3.60. A very great dividend. I like that, um, especially if you're a cash flow investor such as myself. Hey, you like a $3.60 annualized dividend payment per share. I can work with that. Now, this company has a remarkable payout ratio of 51.33%. It's been growing its dividends for 16 solid years, folks. That is impressive and remarkable. See, that tells me that this company is committed to taking care of its shareholders. And that's what a corporation is supposed to do. A corporation is in business to make money for its shareholders and this company has done nothing but rewarded its shareholders with dividend growth for the last 16 years so I like that to me that shows that the company is a shareholder friendly company so what's my overall perspective of Honeywell I think it's a phenomenal company. It's one of those companies that you would just buy and hold. See, you don't want to sell Honeywell. This is a company that you just want to keep in your portfolio for the long run and get that dividend over time and, and accumulate shares over time. This is just one of those blue chip companies that, that's been around the block for a long time that won may consider housing within their portfolio so that's my perspective that's my analysis on Honeywell now you've heard my perspective on Honeywell now I want to get your perspective on Honeywell what do you think about this company do you think it's a, a great company to house within your portfolio let me know in the comments below okay Thank you for tuning in to this video presentation, folks. I hope that you found that this information is informative. If you like the content and the message of the Personal Finance Channel, please like, comment, and subscribe. Your faithful support helps me to continue to create quality level videos regarding personal finance, and it's much appreciated. So folks, just as a friendly disclaimer, this video presentation is not financial advice. This video presentation is simply for 
educational and entertainment purposes only. Okay? So until next time, folks, remember, build and maintain wealth. Build and maintain wealth. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.